lot of guests coming up. We've got some A-State baseball players we're going to talk with. We're going to talk some Red Wolves golf as well. Jonesboro's Matt Loicano scheduled to stop by, but we started off, as we always do, with the head baseball coach at Arkansas State, Coach Tommy Raffo is with us. Hello, Coach. What's happening, Brad? How you doing? Uh, I'm good. I mean, and I know you're sounding a little bit more chipper than somebody that probably spent as much time on the bus as you did last night. It's a, it, there comes a point in time where uh, it, it's funny. You, you drive all night on one of those bus trips, and then once you get off of it, you kind of got to go back through the wind-down process again, and then it just kind of fouls your day up because you're going to hit the wall at some point in time. Well, I, it doesn't really matter about me. It's all about the kids <laughs> because they had finals going today, and uh, a couple of them had a couple, you know, take on Monday and try to get them back in time. A lot of them were studying on the bus last night, and we actually were coming back and driving through those those one right, those two lane roads, um, you know, back through back from Springfield, kind of, you know, that direction, and there was a truck in the middle of the highway. Smack dab. So we get over the hill, and we're going, you know, we're yep. going pretty good. And uh, thank goodness Jerry, our bus driver, did a wonderful job because as soon as we saw it, it looked like a, like a big white cow from a distance. And uh, he immediately started to pump the brakes a little bit. And, gosh, it, it would have been scary. I mean, the whole bus kind of stopped. Everybody in the back was, <laughs> you know, everything that was shifted on the ground went all the way to the front. Everybody woke up that was sleeping. Everybody that was studying had their books off their lap. So it was one of those, hey, wake up calls in the middle of the night. Now, where along the, where along the trip was that? I would say probably about the, uh, what, guys, halfway point, six-hour point. So it was late. I mean, it was dark out. And here's the other thing that was a coincidence. It was a full moon last night. And so that greatly helped see some things down the road. So I think the good Lord is looking out for us. Um, how'd that trip lengthwise you, what's that end up to Manhattan, Kansas? I think it was nine hours, maybe on the road. We stopped for about 20, 30 minutes and, uh, took a little bit of a break and get back on the bus. And, you know, it's just constant. Um, you know, I think the seating wise, it kind of gets to you a little bit, you know, the guys have played and run around all day and, you know, now they got to sit still. Um, but we've done it so much this year. I think we've been on the road more this year than, than most. And, um, you know, we're just happy to get back, and I think they got to lay horizontal for a little bit and get ready for the testing today. Of all things, you get to this stage of the season uh, with out on, stepping out of non-conference play before the you know the two biggest series of the year left, six championship games as you described it, and finally here's a weekend where you play three games right on their scheduled time, and you know that part went just according to plan. It really did. I mean, uh, you know, we got there. You know, we didn't get there to practice on Thursday night because of exams and so we got there and we got up the next morning after breakfast and went to the park to have a really quick run through practice and then kind of like a walk through then uh, we had the game that night everybody's excited Friday nights are fun Friday nights to watch a college baseball game and everybody's juiced they got we got David Owen on the mound um, they got their guy on the mound and everybody's ready to play and uh, a lot of excitement a lot of energy on Friday nights and uh, we kicked it off right on Friday night it was a lot of fun yeah, we'll go over, uh, you know, all these games as we do. And we we talked last week here since being here on Wednesday. We already recapped that Memphis game last week. But for a little bit of a unique series because we're used to win, lose, or draw. This is going to be probably a tight ball game, uh, uh, mostly for the low scoring. And uh, this three-game set, Really, all three nights sort of bucked most of the trends we've seen out of your team this year. Really did. It was a little, a little different. Um, you know, we thought we were very challenged in the strike zone with, uh, you know, the umpiring during the course of the weekend. Of course, we kind of expected that. We told the guys to look for it. It's going to happen, especially when you go on the road to, a, you know, a big-name school, so to speak. And um, uh, I thought our guys handled it for the most part. You know, the, the hard thing is you, you make quality pitches or you have quality at-bats and maybe some things don't go your way. But uh, Friday night I thought our guys did an excellent job of, of battling through that. David actually saw that right away. Uh, he had to settle in a little bit and gave us an opportunity in the middle part of the game to kind of climb back in a little bit. Um, they took a lead, but we grabbed it right back from them and uh, we're able to go to the pen and went, you know, Kibler, Hawkins, and Zuber to, to secure the win. Uh, and on the back end of that game, we did a re really good job of expanding the lead, so to speak, 
to make it a non-issue at the end of the ball game. Uh, had two big hits in the game, two big home runs. You know, Tanner Ring, who's sitting beside me, had a big home run, and uh, Joe Strimp had a big home run. And, and uh, to lead it off in the game, uh, Austin Baker did too. 11-6 was the win Friday night for Arkansas State, and I'm, I'm really glad you mentioned – the strike zone without me having to ask first and I know there's only so much you can or will say about it but I'll say this uh your friend and mine Matt Stoles who's <laughs> who's been around here for 10 years has never done what he did Sunday and that was sent me a text that was only about the umpire and I he's I mean, I gripe about officials all the time. That's no big deal. But it's, I mean, it's like the boy that cried wolf. But Matt never does. And uh, I know the the strike zone, I guess, lacked a little bit to be desired, at least for your radio guys' taste. We were very challenged, very challenged. Um, and you just got to overcome it on the road. When you face, you know, when you got the, the opportunity to go play, um, you compete. And you're, we are given us some circumstances where you just compete in and don't like it. And uh, we talk about it, and uh, I got to go out there and stick up for the t for the team. And at the same time, it just that's the way it turned out. Uh, to back that up, by the way, folks, uh, A State offensively hit 342 in the series against K State and drew seven walks. Meanwhile, Kansas State batters drew 30 walks in three games over the weekend. A little different numbers. That's just a little bit. That's yeah. okay. That's enough of that. That's go awesome. to go to Saturday, and the other thing we saw at least uh, Friday and Saturday for sure were uh, uh, kind of like the old commercial. You better have a Snickers. You're not going anywhere for a while. Three forty one, I think, uh, Friday night, and just came back Saturday. Another long one. I think three hours forty three minutes, uh, and a game to end up sixteen five in favor of K State. Well, here here's the thing that we can take offensively from our squad. I think the pace of the game. Uh, I thought we were able to dictate some tempo in our offense too. And so we were able to get on base and do some things to kind of, hey, they had to adjust. Uh, whereas sometimes in ball games, what you don't want to have happen is to, you know, go down one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that becomes a little bit of a dilemma. I thought, you know, we were challenging all weekend with some of the at-bats that we had. And uh, we just got to keep working in that direction. Uh, we're seeing some real positive things from the team in that, that way. And, uh, at times, we're executing very, very well. Um, I thought Saturday and Sunday, we, uh, we weren't as clean defensively. That hurt us a little bit. Uh, and that's been kind of our strength as far as playing catch. And uh, we knew going on the road, you had to play catch to, to put us in a ball game. So uh, there are some things that, that kind of balanced out. If we could put it all together, obviously, we'd be really, really, really good. Were you concerned at all going in? And I'm not necessarily when you got there, but just going in was – kind of where your team might be mentally in those games, being out of conference play, was, was that ever a concern of yours? No, they really wanted to win. I mean, there's no doubt. We went in – we talked about last weekend. We were going to play to win. Uh, we wanted to win the series. We got Friday night, and I think our guys really wanted to, to get a Friday, Saturday. And, um, you know, obviously early, mid-par, part of the game, we're in the ball game, and then the, the big innings happen against us, and so kind of pushed behind the eight ball. Yeah, beginning uh, another one on Sunday, I think a game, I want to say maybe led three different times uh, mm -hmm. in the game Sunday, but it ends up a 12-6 win for the Wildcats. Yeah, that last inning kind of hurt us a little bit when they scored six and uh, kind of put it out of reach a little bit. Uh, we continued to, to put runners on, and we scored ones or singles, uh, single numbers, and they were putting up some crookeds. Uh, you mentioned, or we mentioned, uh, 342 team batting average in the series. Um, you talked about a couple of guys who delivered some, some big hits via the home run, but overall offensively sort of uh, talk about some guys that, that had good weekends up there. Oh, gosh. I think when you go up and down the lineup, Zach George is pretty consistent. He continues to get on base for us, and uh, I think that's positive. Uh, Joe Shrimp had a big hit for us in the two-hole, and uh, then you get down to the three-hole. Austin Baker's having real consistent at-bats, um, and they're coming more frequently now more than ever before. Uh, Matt Burgess has seen the ball very well. Uh, even his right-handed ABs were very good. Um, then you start to get to Tanner. Tanner was in the five hole for us, and um, he did some damage down there. Even executed a very unselfish play on Sunday where he had a runner at third base and two strikes and moved the baseball to get us a run. 
Um, I think in six hole you had Ty White kind of mixed in there, and uh, he was able to get on base a few times. Seven hole, I think that we had, um, you know, just going back through the lineup here. Uh, Brown was at eight, uh, seven hole. Uh, Federson down the nine was really flipping the lineup for us, and he was getting on base a lot um, to get back up to Zach, which was really positive. Um, so I, I think overall we saw some good things that were happening, and that, that enabled us to have more of a flow and a tempo in the offense. And sometimes in an offense you don't want to have a stop. And what I mean by that is you don't want somebody to stop the flow. You want to continue. You want guys to continue to kind of push the game to the next hitter. And when the, when the game starts, Stewart is actually batting seventh, by the way, catcher. Um, and so when the game stops, it kind of stops the momentum or stops the flow of what you're trying to do. With these two, you know, important Sunbelt weekends left, even dropping the series, there is hopefully something to be taken from a momentum standpoint, scoring 22 runs over the weekend because we, you look at these numbers that are put up against your pitching, and that's it's out. That's the exception, not the rules, especially the walk numbers. And we mm -hmm. talked about some of that. So if your offense can can pick up there, I mean, it's got a chance. To, there's still you know some good things to come out of that, even if it wasn't the series win. You no, know, I think our guys are excited about what they're trying to do this last three or four weeks. I think they they see some good results and. Um, you see a lot of good body language. You see a lot of good positive talk, and uh, we'll continue to, to go that direction. Tommy Raffo's with us live with the Red Wolves. Again, we're at J-Town's Grill. We'll step aside for a timeout, come back, and shift the scene over to a couple of players who have joined us. Live with the Red Wolves, we're at J-Town's Grill on Johnson, right across from Centennial Bank Stadium. We're here at 06, but they're here all night at J-Town's and all kinds of games on when you get to dinner time. Six TVs around the way here. Lots of folks. I've seen a lot of people, especially today, uh, taking advantage of the, all the outdoor seating at J-Town's. Great weather for that as well, so come check them out straight across Johnson Avenue from Centennial Bank Stadium. Time to chat with a couple of Players on the A-State baseball team. And we have the chatty David Owen with us and Tanner Ring as well. Guys, how's it how, going? How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Uh, we're doing okay. So, you each, did you have finals today? Yes, sir. Same one. No, same one. What was it in? AMP2. What is that? If we don't speak Anatomy, abbreviations. Anatomy and physiology. Two. Yes, Which sir. means you've all, you have already mastered A and P one. This was the sequel. I wouldn't say mastered. <laughs> <laughs> so same class. What, are we on the same degree playing here? What's the deal? Yes, sir. Same degree. In uh, exercise science. Okay. So what's the what's the end game with your exercise science degree, David? Hadn't decided. What about you? Uh, strength coach later. Yeah. Yes, sir. So were you in that picture from earlier in the season? Was everybody was looking all yoked up uh, that was out on social media? Yes, sir. I was. I uh, participated in that one. <laughs> no Photoshop there. No, sir. Oh well, impressive. Um, now let's something we've done each week with the players that come by, uh, and Tanner will go with you first. Junior out of Batesville, so yeah, most people still consider Batesville Northeast Arkansas. It's pushing it, but but still consider Batesville Northeast Arkansas. Um, with that said, sort of uh, fill us in on, on how you got to Arkansas State. Well, I had been coming up here for camps for quite a while. I know I did a little Sunday league up here. I think it lasted around a month. And uh, I actually had a bunch of buddies that are a year older than a guy on the team, J.D. Rainwater, who I played summer ball with, and they were from here. And so we always came up here in tournaments here and then uh, just kind of Fell in love with the place and then was recruited here and enjoyed the coaching staff, Coach Raffo and Coach Dickinson and them. And I guess that's how I ended up here. What, if I would have asked you then, let's say when you commit, when you sign, what did you think you were coming here to do? 
uh, be a pitcher. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because, I mean, obviously in high school, I mean, it's you know, a lot of guys do both. I mean, it's a pretty common tale, but you did both and did both well. So you, that was the plan coming in? Yes, was sir. Was that your plan? Was it Coach D's plan too, I guess, huh? I guess kind of both. I mean, I always enjoyed pitching a lot more than hitting because, I mean, pitching just felt – came like easy to me, I guess. So. And then sort of talk us through the course of time that, you know, sort of changed. And now we see you out there hitting home runs. Uh, well, actually, when I got here, I didn't get a helmet the first day for practice to hit. <laughs> it was a little different. I was just a pitcher that day, so that's kind of hit me. And then I think it was a week or two later in, I uh, asked if I could get a helmet and do a little batting practice. And I started hitting with the team and uh, played uh, second base in their squad in the fall and a little bit of third. And then I pitched 27 innings or something as a freshman and uh, later on started playing a little third base at the end of the year. Yep. And then uh, last year I was at third and pitching, doing a little of both, and then I became the DH last year. Now I'm just hitting. <laughs> um, and that's okay? That's okay. Yeah? As long as I can help the team. All right. There you go. That's That was the Bull Durham answer there. What about you, David? Tell us about the road from Millington to Jonesboro. Uh, well, I originally signed with a JUCO out of Mississippi. And um, how I made it here, I guess, is uh, Coach D or somebody called my head coach at Tipton Rosemark where I went to high school, and the head coach came up and said, what do you think about Arkansas State? Well, I really wasn't sure who they were. I'd never heard of them. But anyway, came here, just kind of uh, didn't know what I was really getting into. <laughs> and what did you figure out? When did you find out what you were getting into? Once I got here. <laughs> and what was that? Well, I uh, came here on a visit. It was real late, and um, I watched them play a game and then kind of rode around on campus and looked around, which nothing was open because it was um, it was after school was let out. But, yeah. All right. So, does anybody want to go back and talk about, you know, the, the video folks are still talking about, the Major League commercial from last year? At the A-State Awards, you guys heavily involved in that? Uh, I had a little role in it. Yeah? What What was your role? Uh, the uh, final statement, uh, we're contenders now. <laughs> can you But can you deliver it with the same fervor you did in the video? Uh, we're contenders now. Oh, that was. That was spot on, wasn't it? That's just that's, how he did it. That's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys have a video at the A-State Awards this year? Uh, I guess you did. could call it that. Yeah, but that that set a pretty high bar. It did. It was going to be, it was it was going to be tough to live up to. Yes, sir. So what was what was this year's entry? Well, this year's we had to do a lip sync, um, and they uh, decided to do a scene off Pitch Perfect. Okay. Where they were singing a uh, party in the USA. Yes, and so that's what you guys did. Did you pull? I mean. Am I overreading that you all don't sound happy with the performance? I didn't partake in that one. It wasn't our best. <laughs> we didn't live up to the, the hype for the video, I, I wouldn't say, this year. So, it's time. This is what we would call sort of the throwing people under the bus portion. Who all was in the video? Uh, we had Cole Jenkins, Timon White, and one more. I cannot think of who the other one was. I want to say J.D. Rainwater, maybe. Okay. David Owen and Tanner Ring are with us. Um, so you were, I mean, you were out there, obviously right in the middle of it uh, on Friday night. Um, and I'm, I'm not setting you up here. And so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be as delicate as I can. How do you as a pitcher have to deal with these sort of challenges Coach Raffo referenced uh, in which it felt like Arkansas State pitchers on the weekend were dealing with a pretty small strike zone. When that's the case, what do you do to counter that? Uh, I guess serve it up there. I mean, you got to play the cards you're uh, dealt. And uh, what we were dealing with is really uh, he pretty much knocked the corners off the plate, and you were, you were playing with a real small zone, so you had to throw it in there. How long 
and not even just Friday night when obviously there were some issues or the weekend, but any time as a starter, or how long does it take you to figure out that guy's strike zone that day? Well, uh, I'd say you had to figure it out pretty quick before uh, Coach D uh, gets on to you about it. <laughs> you ain't got a lot of time to play with. How long did it take this particular start? As soon as I got back in the dugout. And he was saying he was you don't have any better. corners? Yeah. Well, I'd figure that out in the first inning after it was a pretty lengthy first inning. Does it, it, it – okay, let's uh, – again, just so I'm not asking the leading question. Let's don't – let's not even say you're getting squeezed. Well, let's just say you're out there – you feel like you're getting squeezed or you feel like there's a tight strike zone you, or you don't have any corners. I mean, what – does it literally take pitches – away from you? Does it change what you're able to throw? Well, it, it doesn't change what you're able to throw as much as it changes you don't get the pitcher's pitches. You have to throw more of a hitter's pitch, whereas you're not getting the strike three calls or the 0-1 calls that are a little off the plate. It's so really, it puts you in a, you're not in your comfort zone, I'd say. Does it, I guess it forces you to just, not that you don't anyway, but forces you to just kind of put more faith in your defense that they're going to hit it to those guys? Certainly. Yeah? Yes, sir. Can, back in your pitcher days, you relate to what he's talking about? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, multiple occasions where it just kind of felt like that on the road, bigger school situations. And uh, can't really – I mean, you can't say you have to give in to the zone, but more pitches are going to be thrown towards where the hitter can actually make contact. Any place you used to go in high school around here where you knew you were going to get squeezed? I don't know. I always had a tough time at Nettleton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get, you were in the middle of the offense uh, <coughs> over the weekend. So tell us about your weekend at the plate. Uh, kind of with the zone. I mean, you know, it was challenging. We had to overcome some calls later. Two strikes became more of a – we expand and try and move the ball. Uh, we had big home runs this weekend, and Friday night was a big night. We had two to get us going back in the game. Uh, then just at the plate this weekend, I mean, I had a couple hits to help. I know Saturday and Sunday I moved a runner in, RBI, I'm a two-strike. I just felt like I was seeing the ball pretty well and just made sure I stayed within the uh, – I guess, as we call it now, the shorts. Coach Raffo's <laughs> teaching term there. So, David, tell me about this. Uh, tell me about your guy Friday night. Even if you didn't have any corners, when you when you did hit him, or uh, he had a good punch out, didn't he? I'd say he's been working that on that one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Can you describe it? Uh, I don't know. If <laughs> that'd be tough. <laughs> it was That's tough. It, not it, like one you've seen before. No, it was different. <laughs> yeah. Who got the, the – did, did you see it first on the – who got the first one of those Friday night? Were, were you on the mound or did you see one of our guys get punched? Uh, I probably – I guess I'd have seen it. I don't even know if I saw it the first time I went out on the mound. I think it was probably brought to my attention once I got back in. Yeah, I just saw it on a vine. <laughs> right, it was, already, it, it was already vine worthy from A State fans tweeting out this – this guy's punch out. Yeah. I guess the players in the dugout noticed it too. Oh, I noticed it right away. There was a bunch of us that started talking as soon as the first <laughs> one was called. <laughs> so what what's what's the conversation like about that? When you say you guys are talking about it, what are you saying? Uh, most of it's just asking if it was a new dance move, or I mean, if he had just been working on that to put on a little show back there for extra, <laughs> or you know, just different things from different guys. Um. Now, shifting gears here, looking ahead, um, obviously there's work to be done. Uh, and the only thing you guys can control here in these last two weekends of conference play is piling up wins for folks wondering, you know, I guess give us the player's mindset here going into these final two Sunbelt weekends. Uh, we're going to go in and try to play hard-nosed baseball. I mean, we just want to go in no matter what situation we're in right now or what the outcome can be later. We can't control that. So, like you said, the next two weeks we want to go in and give it our best effort 
come out with three wins on the weekend, three wins on the next weekend, or win the series each weekend. Just fight to the end. Offensively, uh, as someone who's going to be in there, you know, or involved in the offense, how much confidence do you guys have as an offense when – not all of them, but I was specifically when this guy is on the mound? Oh, a lot of confidence. You know, uh, he's going to go out there and he's going to keep them – at zero, one run, maybe even two tops, you know. We're going to go out there and we're going to do our best score big runs for him. I know this year we had a little drought where we weren't scoring much for him, but now we've kind of broke that with not just him, but everybody on the mound where we're coming back inning after inning and putting pressure on the other team, so. And, I mean, in all honesty, David, you prob you were the poster boy for hard luck pitchers for a big stretch of the season. Uh, run support was, was hard to come by. How do you? How do you just kind of keep coming up and, and putting up zeros uh, in that situation? Uh, you just got to try to keep holding them down and give them a chance. Can't give up on them. <laughs> no, I mean, the human nature reaction to that would be to get frustrated. Are you able to – I mean, how do you keep from that happening? Uh, you get frustrated, but I always look back at it as I hit in high school, so I know what they're going through. I mean, it's tough. Uh, all right, last thing here, rare opportunity for some free plugs. I already asked you this off the air, but uh, I want to give a shout-out for whoever you're repping here with your caps today, Tanner. Uh, I got Trip Supply down in Batesville, Arkansas. Okay. What about <laughs> – tell us about yours there, David. Uh, I'm wearing the Strawberry Poultry Supply. Yeah, and exactly. What do you know about Strawberry Poultry Supply? Uh, I got a good buddy that works there. That's about it. And they got a nice hat, nice chicken on the logo. Yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a good hat. So no problem. So shout out to Strawberry Poultry Supply as well. Uh, how excited were you when Coach Raffo told you the wake up call time for Thursday? I mean, there's no sense in going to bed, is there? It's uh, like one. He said like leaving at like 1:50 no. in the morning. I wouldn't say there's much sense in going to bed. I mean, <laughs> we're finished with finals and after staying up and studying last night. So I don't think 150 is too late. To How fun are these last few weekends slash the tournament when finals are over? So, I mean, like your main deal here is playing baseball. Dress. So you get pretty fun at that point? Absolutely. Not that you don't enjoy class, but that's kind of been this. It's like semi-major leaguer here. This, your main thing to do is play baseball for a few weeks. Yes, sir. Play baseball. Come home, see if a couple guys want to play cornhole. How <laughs> what we do. <laughs> well, guys, we appreciate the visit. Good luck uh, these final two Sun Belt series. Thank you. Thank Tanner Ring and David Owen are with us live uh, with the Red Wolves. We're at J Towns Grill halfway home, but uh, still time for you to come by and see us more live with the Red Wolves after a break. Continue live with the Red Wolves. Again, we're at J Towns Grill. Beautiful day. Lots of folks uh, sitting on these patios at J Towns. Plenty of room out there or inside for you to come by and enjoy their specials tonight. Uh, plenty of games on their six TVs. So come on by and see them at J Towns Grill. Straight across from Centennial Bank Stadium. Brad Bobo joined uh, by Jonesboro's Matt Loicano, a state sophomore on the men's golf team. Named honorable mention all Sun Belt last week by the league, Matt. So, thanks for stopping by. Uh, thanks for having me. And congratulations on your All Conference honors. Thank you. Um, so, so, tell us about your season overall. Uh, you're well, one of uh, a short number of guys that played in, in every tournament for the team. So, before we kind of talk about the team, uh, so, so go your year from your standpoint. Um, I had a good year. I mean, it wasn't my best, but um, golf, you can always find somewhere that you could have done better. But uh, 
I had a decent year. I tried my best the whole year. I mean, sometimes I didn't get the results I wanted, but overall the team did a pretty good job this year. Uh, 75, under 75.8 stroke average. Um, you know, Joe Blow, I mean, myself, we'd, you know, go over and knock off a bank. If we can go out and average 75. Um, you know, where was that number kind of where either you wanted it to be or kind of where you thought it would be going into the season? I don't know. Um, I mean, all everyone hopes for around even par stroke average for the year. But, uh, I mean, I had some tough tournaments, so that kind of hurt my average uh, for the year. But, I mean, it, it. I think it turned out better than I thought I played this year. I mean, kind of like that. You think so? I mean, I would think that probably means you're your own worst critic. If you say you 75 is better than you felt like you played this season. Um, I mean, at times uh, it wasn't bad, but uh, uh, I mean, it's not what I want or what the team needs, but I mean, I can take from it and improve on it this next coming year, so. After with a couple of college golf seasons under your belt and having played around here and come up through the junior and high school ranks, what's uh, what's different about college golf than maybe you, you thought going into it? Um, I mean, almost everything about it's pretty different than junior golf or high school golf. I mean, it's something, I mean, it's hard to have any experience unless you're there. I mean, uh, the one thing that's always is uh, – fun about college golf is the weather. I mean, we play fall and spring. Fall is usually a little bit nicer than the spring, but uh, the weather is usually uh, terrible almost every week we play, but I mean, that's college golf. I mean, everybody's got to do it. Well, this is the same as baseball. And everybody dealt with this particular spring. I mean, it, uh, no matter and it, it followed you around. It doesn't matter if you're in Jonesboro, Mobile, wherever. I mean, it, you're reading about rain shortened or postponed. I mean, it, was, it seemed like it was something every week out there. Yeah, we played a couple of tournaments that, I mean, as much rain came down, we shouldn't have been playing, but we did. And, I mean, when it rains, it makes the course that much more difficult, especially in the short game around the green. I mean, the lies are tougher to chip from and pitch. And, I mean, everything's just way different when the weather is that big a factor. As a golfer, how hard is it to stay where you need to be mentally to compete when it's just miserable being out there? Yeah. Um, I mean, before you go out, you got to tell yourself, I mean, half the field isn't going to do as good as they could if the weather was good. I mean, so you're already beating half the field if you have a good attitude or you come out thinking right. So, I mean, before you go out, that's one of the things we do. I mean, we got to – I mean, everybody's going to play in it. I mean, if you get down a couple holes or, I mean, you make some bad swings or bad holes, I mean, it's all right because – everybody's, I mean, the scoring average for the day is going to be that much higher. So, I mean, it's just tough, but it's just something you got to deal with and be mentally prepared. Matt Loy Cotton is with us, A-State sophomore on the men's golf team and all Sunbelt Conference pick. You guys, uh, you're a sophomore, but on that team a lot of times you may have been one of the old guys. You, you, you threw some young guys out there most weeks, didn't you? Oh, yeah, we had uh, Tanner Napier. He's a freshman. He's from Texas. And then uh, – Petter Salquist, he's from Sweden. He, they made most of the trips. They were freshmen. And then we uh, – uh, Seth Garner, he's a junior. He's one of he, – uh, he, he'll be our oldest guy next year. He's the only – we'll, we'll have another senior too. But him and Oswin Slankrich, they uh, – yeah, they all helped. I mean, the freshmen did a really good job this year for their first year of college golf. Um, I was impressed with Tanner and the way he played. I mean, he always had some some kind of good coming out of him in one of the three rounds. So it was a good year for the freshmen, and I think we did pretty good for the amount of experience we had. But uh, we can we could have done better, but we'll do better next year. We'll have a good team. Yeah, you like where I mean, obviously everybody talking about freshman, freshman, sophomore, junior. A lot of times in the lineup, I mean it. Uh, you got to like where, where things set. You guys flip it around. You know, don't won't be too long till the fall season is here, honestly. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, no, it's kind of scary to think that I'll be a junior already. But, <laughs> uh, 
no, uh, we'll have a good team next year. And I mean, the year this, the experience the freshmen got this year, I mean, it will help them tenfold come fall. And then. Tell us about your summer. What sort of, uh, which tournaments we're we going to see you out there in uh, over the course of the summer? Um, I'll do USAM qualifier again. I don't know where yet. Um, uh, Magnolia Am in Hattiesburg, Mississippi again. That's that's always a good tournament. And Hattiesburg Country Club where we play. We play that as a college tournament in the fall, so I like going down there. Uh, so that's a fun course. Um, I signed up for St. Jude qualifier over in Memphis, just the pre-qualifier. See how that goes. Um, I don't have anything else on there right now. I'll play some ASGA around the state, maybe. But uh, other than that, uh, probably going to be practicing, looking to improve. There's step. Look at that. You talk about the, the FedEx St. Jude Classic, and it's just about a month away at Southwind. There's steps before. How many are steps before the Monday qualifier? You play to get to that, or? Yeah, I son. Uh, it's a uh, one. It's called pre qualifier, and then you got Monday. Or I, I think it might be on Sunday for their tournament, but. Yeah, you have to go to uh, pre-qualifier, and I think they take, like, top 39 out of the field or whatever percent or have many players entered. And then Sunday they'll take low four or low three or something like yeah. that. And, of course, we've followed Austin Cook a couple of times, turning those Monday qualifiers into uh, uh, great performances out on the tour. So it can be done. Yeah, yeah Austin's done great uh, this year, and when he's gotten his opportunities, he's taken advantage of them. Uh, everybody in town is real proud of Austin and hope to see him continue on. You play much golf with your sister during the summer? Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, we probably play, I mean, three to four times a week just depending on what she's doing or what I'm doing. I mean, if she's in town, we'll probably play together. Or if I'm in town, I mean, just depends on our schedules and but, yeah, we'll usually get out there and we'll play every once in a while, mainly just practice. She doesn't like playing with me for some reason. <laughs> you guys play, and you're going to go out and you're going to play for real. Is it – you make her hit from the same tees, you let her move up a set, how you, how do you work it? I don't know. She can play where from, from wherever she wants. Uh, I mean, she usually plays from the tee up for me or two, I, I mean, just depending on what she wants to do. But – no, she can hang in there yeah. any day of the week. So give her, we'll give her one set of tees. Perfect weather conditions. At the at a course you two both familiar with. Who's coming out on top? How tight is it? Ah, uh, it'll probably be fifty-fifty. She'll win half the time. I'll win half the time. I mean, if she gets the, if she gets her putter going, that's she's a really good player. The great equalizer. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, congratulations again on a good season. And uh, didn't mean to scare you, but yet you'll be an underclassman when the season cranks back up in the fall. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. All right, Matt Lloyd Cano, uh, honorable mention, all Sunbelt pick, joins us live at J-Town's Grill. We got one more break to take. We'll come back. Welcome Tommy Raffo back in and look ahead uh, to a big Sunbelt series ahead for A-State as we continue live with the Red Wolves right after this. Heading down the home stretch of another live with the Red Wolves from J Towns Grill, A State head baseball coach Tommy Raffo back with us. And uh, coach, this is where uh, 
your guys sort of, they get to live the life of Riley when they finish up finals here for uh, however much is left in the season to kind of semi, like, like big leaguers, where baseball is the, the number one thing on the list once they get uh, classes squared away here. Well, we travel tomorrow. There might be a few exams on Wednesday, and um, we actually catch a flight. We leave at one like 1.50 in the morning on Thursday morning to uh, drive to Little Rock. Uh, catch an early flight, get into um, Austin around 9 a.m., and then uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do, you know, during that day. Hopefully, get the guys checked in. Maybe they can lay down for a little bit, and then we got practice Thursday night before Texas State. So it's a little bit of a a push, you know, some of the travel we've had this year. But um, you know, that's the way the conference is outlined, and and you know, I'd rather be traveling without school to Texas State than with school. Absolutely, but before Texas State. Uh, there is midweek action this week, tomorrow, uh, and a team, I guess the way the, the weather once again dictated, we only end up seeing once this year is uh, you go to Conway to take on UCA tomorrow night. Yeah, they're, um, I think they're middle of the pack in the Southland. They just came off a uh, stretch in, um, in uh, San Antonio where they lost three in their league and um, very some close games uh, on the road, and they're back home, and uh, they've got a great home record. I mean, they do a good job. They can field the ball very well. Their fielding percentage is very good. Uh, they give you really good at-bats at the plate. they got an up-and-down lineup that's um, some juniors and seniors that do a good job of, um, of handling the bat. Uh, I know that we're going to see some of their pitching. They're going to see, you know, our pitching. We need to have Derek do have a good job on the mound. Coach Ty's got, got, got him ready for um, – to get us 15, 18 outs. If we can get more, that would be really, really good to help us going into the weekend. Um, but I think both pitchers, starting pitchers for both teams, will probably be extended no matter what the game goes uh, just because uh, the conference weekends are coming up for both teams are so important. And which, back to Derek, was probably you were, you were going to get what you wanted and more out of him. We talked about last week uh, uh, Ends up taking a, a, a line drive, a comebacker off the shin. It sounds like uh, he's cleared that hurdle and is ready to get back out there. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, he had a couple at bats actually this weekend. <laughs> so, um, you know, just trying to get, you know, Derek as far as uh, back out there again. And, you know, he was able to locate. And when he locates, he's very, very uh, hard as far as having a. Uh, and at bat, that's a really, really good. I mean, uh, if he mislocates and he gets behind some hitters, then like any pitcher, it becomes very difficult for him to get outs. Uh, but he, he was very much in tune to that ball game. His tempo was fantastic last weekend, last week against Memphis. So it is at UCA tomorrow at 6 down in Conway. And then as you've already mentioned, uh, the big series this weekend at Texas State. Uh, a, a series that, well, even going back to last week when you, you were talking about these last two weekends, your team in a situation right now where uh, Texas State, UALR to go, uh, you know, the Red Wolves are, are playing what you're going to approach as six Sun Belt Championship games. You really do. I mean, there's no tomorrow for us. We need to do well and, and kind of get off to, to a good Friday night and see what happens from there. Uh, we got a couple teams in front of us that um, – have done very well as far as accumulating some wins in front of us. And uh, so we got a work cut out for us to kind of go in this weekend. Looking at the standings uh, heading in, uh, you know, the, the thing we see now is at least uh, in around you here, the, the buys have sort of played their way through to where there's no more kind of guessing and projecting and looking. I mean, you can look at the wins and losses and know – kind of where things stand and, and who needs to do what coming in. Of course, all that's predicated by winning ball games first. There's no doubt. That's the bottom line. You take care of your own business. And last weekend we were able to, I mean, uh, two weekends ago we were able to win a series, and that was a start. And obviously that we have to be able to win a series or more coming up for these next two. And um, I like finishing at home. I think that's important. And uh, I like having we're on the road without school. You know, it's just a logistical deal whenever, anytime you deal with Texas State. Not, not in the conversations with the team, but maybe just in your head looking at them. Is there a number? Do you think it's going to take five out of six to give a shot? Or is, that, I mean, is there a number you have in your head that you think it's going to take to get there? Um, Brad, I think, you're, I think you're, you know, you're hitting some numbers that are probably right, um, the way it's played out. 
Um, we've had plenty of opportunities to get above what we've had. I think we had seven or eight or nine different times where we, we've actually won a game in the series to have another opportunity. It just didn't pan out for us. And so we can't look back and say, well, you know, that's, we had the opportunities earlier. Um, now we just got six more, and we got to get, you know, five, six, you know, five, four, five, somewhere in there. We got to be able to, to do well. So you're looking at winning series one, but then you got to be able to have maybe a little bit more help too. And Sid, as we talked about earlier, folks who may not have been with us uh, earlier in this hour, even with the, the even without winning the series at K State, um, you look at scoring you know 22 runs over those three ball games, and and that's where you know win, lose, or draw. You hope that's where the carryover lies. That uh, you bring that offense to hit 342 over the weekend with you into these last two weekends of Sunbelt play. Well, just put it all together. I mean, I think the pitching very much with uh, what Coach Ty has done with our staff was uh, has done a tremendous job of keeping us in games when we weren't scoring. And, um, you know, they've had to really exert a lot during that course of time. I think consistency-wise, we've had a, a few bugaboos with playing catch. But for the most part, we've been good up until the last couple games. And then uh, now that the offense is starting to kind of generate a little bit, um, you just want to be able to put it together. You want to feel good about playing your whole complete game and then see what happens from there. Yeah, again, just being Monday, maybe a little bit too early, but do you, since you did not see Gladwell over the weekend, do you sort of know moving forward with that? Do you know who gets the starts on the weekend? Well, since it's a championship game for us coming up Friday, so to speak, you know, David Owen will get the ball, and we'll kind of go from there. Um, what you saw this past weekend is we felt like it was good to try to go for the win on Friday night. So we used Kibler and Hawkins and Zuber because, hey, let's get the win and then we'll move on to the next day. And that's kind of the game plan that we'll probably have going into Texas State. Um, tell us about Texas State. They're going to come in right now 12-12 12 and 12 in the league. Had sort of hit a slide uh, that maybe it's last week. I know they, they won on Sunday there. So uh, what do you know about the Bobcats? Well, first of all, our heart goes out to a former Arkansas State Red Wolf, Ty Harrington, who um, coached here under Bill Bethay and has had uh, some issues with um, – uh, some colon cancer, and and uh, is actually laid out this year um, a little bit to kind of go through some treatments. And so, you know, it's probably a little bit bigger, you know, for him. Uh, obviously, he's had a, a great staff that's kind of taken over for him. Uh, they kind of got out of the gates really slow. But in conference play, they've been really kind of consistent and uh, held their own. Um, they've always been able to pitch. Uh, whenever you look at the state of Texas, they can always pitch. They can produce a lot of good pitchers. Um, they've been kind of up and down a little bit offensively. Um, and so hopefully we catch them on a bad trend, so to speak. Uh, but we're going to their park. We've never been there. This is the first time going to their park. So I'm kind of anxious to see how it plays. And, I mean, do you, can you even factor in at all when, either when you're pitching this weekend that everybody's going to lose a day you know, next weekend for Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I think it's a good point, Brad, but I don't think you play it that way. I mean, you just got to do what you can do, and then we'll figure it out from there. And uh, so game one is the most important game, and then we'll go for game two and so on. And then when we get to the following week and everybody shortens the week up, uh, we'll see where we're at. It is uh, a four-game week for Arkansas State. Again, uh, 6 o'clock tomorrow at uh, UCA, 6 o'clock Friday. 3 o'clock Saturday and scheduled for a noon start Sunday in San Marcos, Texas. So first trip down there. Sounds like a bunch of wins to me. Looking forward to it. I mean, I, you know, obviously it's, um, uh, you know, it's a new team for us to go down and play. It's, uh, it's different. Uh, we've had a lot of different venues we've played at here lately. You know, Georgia <laughs> Southern, you know, Kansas State. Uh, there's been a lot of different places we've played at this year. For some reason, it's been a little bit and, of course, it's been on the road. Yep. Good luck this week. Okay, okay. thanks, Brad.